So we've all heard of the badminton legend Lin Dan, and we all know of his famous injection of pace attacking skills. But what many of you don't know because, hey, we're, we're moving into the 2000s, millennials, into the Gen Zs. You don't know young Lin Dan. You don't know how he used to attack. His iconic forehand cross court slice smash that would win the point every time he did it. Now he's not as in shape as before to execute something like that. And people are kind of used to the shot, but back then that was the winning shot. That was his sniper kill. Well today I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to execute the famous Lin Dan cross court slice smash. So make sure to like, comment, Comment and subscribe and watch till the end of the video. So the first thing we need to know when we're doing this smash is how do we move into position. Now the thing that really makes this smash special is his ability to inject pace. That means when the shot is coming flat, he can move very quickly into position to hit the smash. Now what we want to do is we want to start in our neutral position, of course, with our right foot slightly in front, kind of like in a 45 degree angle. Now on the forehand side, what we want to do first is we want to turn facing that shuffle direction and as quickly as we can do a one and then jump. Usually when you're doing forehand movements you might see multiple shuffles one two three but because this is very quick and we want to cut it off halfway we're only going to be doing one shuffle into a direct jump. Now when you're doing the footwork for this you really want to make sure you're going fast and you need to predict ahead of time because this is an injection of pace attack. That means when you know they're going to be hitting the shot over here, turn a little bit earlier and then really push off with your toes on your left foot if you're right-handed. Quick, pop, and when you jump, make sure you have this hold in the air so they don't know where you're going to hit. And if you want, would be like Lin Dan if you watch his younger videos, he likes to turn his face like kind of sideways just to make the smash go more sideways. Who knows what that's, who knows what that's about? Now we know how to move into position, let's talk about how to properly grip our racket for this shot and how to swing to hit this shot. Now for the grip, we're going to start in the standard neutral grip, which is just going to be handshake into the racket with the racket facing vertically up this way. Now for this shot, because we're going to be having to face our racket more to the left to hit a slice shot, when you're hitting, holding the racket, you can kind of curve your wrist inwards as you're hitting. But we want to maintain a very neutral position on our grip. One thing you do not want to do is you do not want to hold your thumb on the side. Why? Because you'll see, if I start holding my thumb on the side, my racket face will start facing straight or even slightly outwards. And it's gonna be really hard to bring that shot in. So neutral grip. Second is how do we hit the swing? Well, now we know the footwork, move into position. We're gonna be hitting it like any overhead shot. First, leading with our elbow out and then going forward. Now one special thing about this cross court slice smash is usually if you're hitting cross courts directly, you'll want to be facing that direction when you're hitting. But for the deception of this cross court slice smash, we're going to be still facing straight when we're hitting, but on contact, our racket face is going to be don't imagine even slicing. It's going to be wrapping around the bird so that it goes cross court. But our string swing direction will still be going in a straight movement to have deception. Because when people see a straight swing, they think your shot is going straight, but when in fact your shot is going cross court. Now let's talk a little bit more about the contact point. Earlier I said, don't think of it as slices. Whenever you're hitting slice shots, it's never a fully slice. If you think of it as a slice, it becomes very inconsistent. So we always want to imagine a combination, a spectrum between hitting and slicing. I would say a very good amount of hitting and slicing would be 75-70% 70 where you actually contact directly the bird and 30% where you're slicing the bird. So a combination of contact and slicing and that's going to provide you with enough speed but enough racket swing and deception that also brings down the angle of your shot. Now, let's also talk a little bit more about the angle of this shot. We know how to move our footwork, we know how to move our grip, we know how to swing, we know how to contact. One really important thing is after you swing, you really use your wrists and fingers to bring it down so it just skims over the net and you really want to follow through with that swing. Because if you don't, if you just stop over here, it's going to be very high or inconsistent. So you want to make sure, cuff it down and follow through all the way your swing to have that angle on your slice smash. So now what does that look like putting it all together? Well, let's start again with our footwork in our neutral position, right foot in front. 
We want to first turn, do a quick shuffle, pushing off with our left foot, and then coming up into the air. Now we're in the air, we have to hold for deception. If you can't jump, you're not going to be doing it like Lindan, so make sure you jump nice and high. We're going to bring our elbow forward while still being in this position, so we're not turning our body for the scissor kick because we don't want to show to our opponent that we're hitting cross court. So in the sideways position, we're bringing our elbow forward and then using our wrist and fingers, we swing straight, but on contact, we're wrapping our racket around the bird so that it goes cross court. So swing straight, cross court, and make sure we bring it all the way down for that angle. And when we're landing, we're also still landing sideways. Like I said, we're not doing the scissor kick turn. And from here, all we have to do is do one shuffle back and then we'll be returning to the center of the court to reset again. So when we're practicing this drill, accuracy is very important. So while we're gonna be practicing the forehand cross slice smash, we're gonna be placing a tube on where we want to hit. Now, where do you want to hit this tube? Well, look at here. This line on the courts, imagine drawing a little box right over here. And you can put it at the center of this box. Now, why don't we want to put it at the side? It's because if we put it at the side, if it hits the tube at the side, that means the bird is probably going out. So if it hits the tube over here, that means it's going to be landing straight on the line. Or anything less is even fine. You don't want to go for risky shots. So this is what we're going to be trying to aim for the slice smash. It's okay if it goes a little bit further, but just having that symbol there, we can recognize in our head of where we're trying to hit and actively aiming for something instead of just randomly hitting shots every time. Do you want private coaches, custom training plans, and results in your badminton journey? Well, join our free online badminton academy, link down below. I hope you guys enjoy this video and you guys learn how to smash like Young Lin Dan's iconic slice smash. I hope you can use it or you will use it in your next game to win every single point because no one at your level is going to be able to achieve that. But you got to make sure you can move fast enough in that position. If you want to see more badminton tutorials like this or in our Smash Masterclass series, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to join our free online badminton academy. Link down below. Until then, we'll see you next time.